All right, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to the National Jazz Museum in Harlem. Thank you guys for coming out. My name is Ryan Maloney. I help uh, run the education programs and the public programs that we do here at the museum. How many of you are first time visitors to the National Jazz Museum in Harlem? Lovely, all right. Yeah, I guess technically you guys, this is the second time, very cool. Um, so thank you guys very much, those first timers. We appreciate you. Uh, we were just talking about how there's so many things to do in New York City, and uh, we're one of many. So we appreciate you taking the time to come and join us. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit, so we do depend on uh, folks to help us out, grants and uh, corporations and individuals. So those of you who did make a donation when you came in, we really appreciate it. If you w would like to make a donation, either for the first time or the second time today, you can do that on your way out. Um, Martin will be up at the front door. He can help you out with that. Um, let me think here. What else do we have to cover? Uh, if you happen to be in New York City on June 12th, it's our annual fundraising event. We do a concert every year. This year it's going to be over at Aaron Davis Hall at, C at City College. It's going to feature uh, an amazing uh, musician, saxophone player, and vocalist, uh, Camille Thurman. So you can come check out Camille. We're also going to feature uh, one of the legendary, most legendary songwriters in the history of American music, Valerie Simpson. You may know her from Ashford and Simpson and the countless uh, hits that they penned over the years. So she's going to come and sing and, and perform a couple of tunes for us as well. So you can find those tickets on our website, ja National ja uh, Jazz Museum in Harlem .org, um, and you can you can catch your tickets there. We are starting to wind down our spring season. Uh, we have a handful of events left. I just want to uh, point out one in particular next week on Tuesday. A young man by the name of Emmanuel Wilkins. He's a saxophone player from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And uh, he is taking on the task of reimagining music that's over 100 years old. And that music was originally written and performed by a man named James Reese Europe, who was uh, still, uh, unfortunately, largely unrecognized uh, when we talk about the history of American music. But have you all heard of Duke Ellington before? Yes. Okay. So before Duke Ellington, there was a guy, James Reese Europe. 
And we would not have Duke Ellington without James Reese Europe. And Duke Ellington uh, gave tremendous credit to James Reese Europe for doing a lot of amazing things. Now, we, if we listen to James Reese M Europe's music right now, you may not think, oh, that sounds like jazz, because it was kind of before Ellen, uh, Louis Armstrong was on the scene, and it was kind of this amorphous period of black American music when a lot of things were going on. But what he was doing, he was revolutionizing what it meant to play and to write black American music. In particular, he formed ensembles that didn't rely on the traditional instrumentation of the Western European classical tradition. The big band wasn't a thing yet. So he was putting together bands that consisted of all the different Western European instruments that we think about but also with mandolins and banjos and different kinds of drums and marching band instruments and things that you, you had never seen an ensemble like that before. And there's a great picture of uh, his cafe, or no, it's called the, the Clef Club Orchestra that performed, the first African-American group that performed at Carnegie Hall. And you see all of these amazing instruments, almost 120 musicians in this ensemble. So... If you want to dig deep into the history of jazz, you need to dig deep into the music of James Reese Europe. So on Tuesday next week, Emmanuel Wilkins and his trio um, are going to reimagine that music. We're actually going to listen to the songs on our Victrola, our old 78 uh, player. We're going to listen to the original 78s, and then we're going to have the trio reimagine those. So if you happen to be in the city, please come and check that out. Um, and that brings us to tonight. You know, we are the National Jazz Museum in Harlem. And that word national, sometimes it's hard for us to really make a national footprint. We have satellite programs at a lot of major universities around the country. Uh, we work with different community organizations around the country. Um, but we're always looking for new opportunities um, to make connections around the nation so we can really continue to expand our footprint as the National Jazz Museum in Harlem. And a great opportunity came to us, I guess it was almost a year ago? A year? Close to a year? Exactly a year ago. Oh, were you guys here for EE last year? Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, exactly a year ago, we started talking about the opportunity to, uh, to partner with the Flathead Ellington Project and with uh, this great organization called Groove Trail. And the idea is that we're going to get a group of young musicians from, um, from rural Montana, and we're going to bring them to New York City, and we're going to give them all the things that New York City has to offer. One of those is a performance opportunity, live music here in New York City as a as a jazz musician. So that's what brings us here tonight. Uh, I'm going to pass the mic over to the, the director and the founder of Groove Trail and, and this wonderful project, a great saxophone player. And I just, in, in reviewing your bio earlier, I realized we moved to New York City at the very same time. And I used to, she doesn't know this, but I used to hear at all these jam sessions around the city, I was a really nervous small town kid that would sit in the back of the clubs. And I really loved, I play also, but I was more interested in just kind of checking things out. So I've been a big fan of her music for a long time. But please welcome Erica Von Kleist, everybody. Thanks, Ray. Woo. Well, um, we're going to, I'm going to, speak a little bit more about the Ellington Project and what it is, and we're from Montana, and what is this all that's happening tonight, and why is it so special? Um, but uh, this week uh, has been the culmination of another project of mine with a duet partner extraordinaire that I had the privilege of meeting in Montana, even though he lives just a mile that way, um, or that way, that way. And uh, we just recorded an album the other day at Dizzy's Club Coca-Cola, and we're going to play a couple t songs for you to kind of break the ice a little bit. So please welcome DeWitt Fleming, Jr. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
DeWitt and I collaborated on, um, uh, thanks Guy Thorson. Um, so DeWitt and I collaborated on this album. I feel like I do all the talking. Because, you know, I <laughs> <laughs> Well, we work together. I know, you got it. You're the one, who, you're the actor, you're the one who gets on stage and says lines. Okay. Um, but we, we collaborated on this album project um, a couple of days ago, and we were sending each other ideas, and this uh, song, uh, Piggy Bank for Charity, we just played, is an original by us, and uh, we actually did a video in Whitefish, Montana, of the tune, which we're going to be dropping really, really soon. Yeah. Yeah, so it's this sort of Montana meets New York. Many layers of this, right? All right.
America, Von Clay. Thank you. 
do this in stages. Um, we are here for many special reasons and we are so, um, we're just, it's such a gift to be here tonight and I will probably cry later, mm -hmm. but like it's just has been a huge, huge paramount of dedication and love and hard work and faith um, with all of these teachers and students coming together. And um, we're going to bring up two members of the Flathead Ellington Project to sit in with DeWitt and I to kind of sort of bring this, um, these amazing students up here. Um, let's welcome Owen and Casey. Come yeah. on up. Um, these students had the pleasure of working with DeWitt in Whitefish um, last year at the uh, Groove Trail Jazz Camp, Summer Jazz Camp. Middle and high school students got together and. We had a day camp, and um, Owen has been working with DeWitt on tap dancing, and he's also my saxophone student. You'll hear him play saxophone a little bit later. Um, and Casey uh, is from Big Fork, Montana, and he'll be attending the Lytle Hampton School of uh, Jazz in, at uh, University of Idaho, right? In the yeah. fall. So we're really, really proud of him. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
DeWitt Fleming Jr. Eric Von Glaze. And um, okay, so we're gonna bring up the rest of the Flathead Ellington project, and I'll explain a little bit more about how this came to be. But I know these guys are rearing to play, so please welcome the Flathead Ellington project, led by Sky Thorson, David John Key, and Mark McCready. Good evening. Um, my name is Mark McCready, and I teach in Whitefish, Montana. Anybody here from Whitefish? Tonight? <laughs> we'll get the wave going here. Um, such a pleasure and such an honor to be here in Harlem. Uh, we are going to start things off with this little band uh, by playing the first movement of Duke Ellington's Shakespearean Suite. And this particular movement depicts a character called Othello. And I believe this music captures the swagger with which this man would walk if he came in this room. This is uh, Such Sweet Thunder featuring Aidan Calloway on the Barry Sax, Afton Went on the trumpet, and Brian Phipps on the trombone.
All right. We're going we're gonna to kick right into a classic blues now. Uh, this was written by the great alto saxophonist Johnny Hodges. And uh, he was sometimes referred to by the nickname Jeep, among other things. So this is Jeep's Blues. Uh, and it's a great example of a common practice in the Ellington band where Duke Ellington would hear one of his players just rip off an amazing little melodic riff or something. And then, you know, three days later, it would be a fully orchestrated big band chart. And so uh, a great example. Uh, tonight, our performance will feature Owen Metter, Brian Phipps, Afton Went, Connor Bullens, Sam Lovering on solos, Jeeps Blues.
Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is David Jockey, and I'm the director of bands at Flathead High School in Kalispell, Montana, not too far away from Whitefish, where Mark McCready is from. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. And what do you think of these kids so far? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Our next piece is considered an absolute classic. It's a fundamental piece that every jazz musician should know in the repertoire. This is St. Louis Blues by W.C. Handy. And what inspired him to, to play this, or to write this piece, was he was in St. Louis and he heard a distraught woman who was heartbroken utter this phrase, and he incorporated that phrase into his song, and he composed this piece. So here is the St. Louis Blues by W.C. Handy, and this will feature a number of soloists. First, Turner Haugen on piano, Connor Bullens on tenor sax, Sam Lovering alto sax, and Casey Eisman on bass. This is St. Louis Blues.
privilege of um, being a finalist for the Essentially Illington competition at Jazz and Lincoln Center, which is going on right now at Jazz and Lincoln Center. <laughs> We're bringing these kids tomorrow. But um, the, what I learned from mu learning the music of Duke Ellington was there's nowhere to hide in this music because every single influence and every single iota of jazz history and music history is hidden inside of Duke's music. And it was a catalyst for me to um, dive into my dedication and seriousness towards the study of jazz. And starting this program, that's the credo behind which this program was built. And it's um, the fact that these students have taken this music and not just learned it technically, um, but also have just taken this and made it theirs and made it so artistic and made it so real. I'm just so incredibly proud. Let's hear it for these students. Oh, They've been rehearsing every single week since September. Um, they've also been having section rehearsals as well as private lessons. And um, Sam is my saxophone student. And um, yes, this is the Flat El Ellington Project, but we're also working on music by all sorts of wonderful, great musicians. And we're going to be performing um, uh, Round Midnight by Thelonious Monk.
right, that was awesome. Our next piece is Echoes of Harlem, originally known as Cootie's Concerto. Uh, Duke Ellington wrote a number of pieces for his uh, star players in his band, and he had a whole series of concerti, if you will, for all of his star soloists. So Cootie's Concerto, AKA uh, Echoes of Harlem, and this will feature our very own Sky Thorson, one of our directors on trombone. <laughs> Afton Went on trumpet. And we just can't get enough of Casey Eisman on uh, bass. Actress of Harlem. Okay, well, our next chart is from the uh, 1940 to 1942 era of the Ellington band called the Blanton-Webster era. And that was the time when the composer was probably the most prolific and wrote some great, great material. Uh, this piece was also the opening theme for the band's radio show in 1940. And so this is Sepia Panorama featuring Afton Went, Brian Phipps, Casey Eisenman, 
Connor Bowens, Turner Haugen, Sepia Panorama. Guy Thorson. I am one of the directors of these. I got these awesome colleagues that I get to work with. Um, uh, thank you, Mark and Dave. They are just, it's really cool to have a team of people to, to work with uh, when we're working with these awesome kids. Um, in 2008, I was a senior in college at Whitworth University in Spokane, Washington, and my college jazz ensemble traditionally every fall would have a guest artist come to to play with us. Uh, people like Kenny Garrett and Robin Eubanks and Joshua Redman and um, Gene Harris and Kenny Barron. And, I mean, big names, you know. Um, and that that year, um, our director chose to have the first female guest artist um, in the school's tradition of 25 years of having these guest artists. And, that is when I met Erica, Erica Von Kleist. She, um, yeah. She, 
she and uh, Ryan Keverly, this fantastic trombonist, uh, came and did a, a guest artist show with my band. And that's when I first met Erica 11 years ago. And um, then we reconnected when she moved to Montana and when I was in Montana as well. And uh, it was really amazing to see her passion for jazz education and what she has done for our entire valley in our little Flathead Valley, Northwest Montana. Um, she's, she's really an ambassador of jazz education in that little corner of our state. And we are so thankful for Erica. So yeah. thank you so much, Erica. Yeah. And a couple of years ago, she, she came to me and she said, I've got this idea and we're going to do it. <laughs> and that's how she is. She's just like, no, we're not just, this isn't just a dream. This is going to happen. And look at we're here. We're here in Harlem and we couldn't be happier. Uh, we're going we're gonna to perform a ballad for you. Um, we're going to feature our Barry saxophonist. And who else? Casey? Yeah. So uh, our Barry saxophonist, Aiden Calloway. And you're going to hear from our bassist, Casey Eisenman. Sophisticated Lady is uh, a, a beautiful, beautiful ballad that most jazz musicians just really love. Um, just because there's a lot of harmonic complexities there's in the melody. And you'll hear some chromatically descending ninths in, and some really cool sevenths in the tonic. Um, and it's a, such a beautiful song that when uh, George Gershwin was asked, hey, was there a song that you wish you could take credit for to have composed? He said, the bridge for Sophisticated Lady. Uh, so this is a beautiful tune. Um, ready? Let's do it. So Stan, this is uh, Owen Calloway and the Flathead Ellington Project and Sophisticated Lady. <laughs> I'm at Aiden, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Hayden Calloway. You also heard from Turner Haugen on the piano. One more chart for you tonight. Um, this is a really cool tune uh, that Duke Ellington wrote as part of his Afro Eurasian um, suite, and it's entitled Chinoiserie. And the idea behind it is that um, there was a professor in Toronto that um, has a theory that um, we're eventually our our race is all going to end up being the same at some some point. And Chinoiserie speaks to um, just the the social barriers in uh, that have that have afflicted our country and our world. And uh, it's a beautiful beautiful piece. It's really fun. It's a fast fast chart. And we're gonna hear a tap dance and a bunch of things. Let me see here. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what are we gonna hear? <laughs> So you're gonna hear from Aiden again uh, in the intro, and uh, he's gonna do a little uh, Love Supreme kind of a John Coltrane <laughs> style. As this was, this piece, this tune was um, a response to that modal jazz era and jo John Coltrane. This was Duke's Duke's homage to that. And uh, you're gonna also hear from Casey Iceman on bass and Owen Metter on tap dance and Sam Lovering on the saxophone, and Turner Haugen, in no particular or order, on the piano. <laughs> um, and this is, a, this is a fun chart, hope you guys enjoy it. This is Chinoiserie. Thank you. 
we're going to do one more quick one, but we wanted, I first of all want to thank um, our incredible educators. Without you guys on this team, this would not have been a possibility. Mark McCready, David Jonke, and Sky Thoris. Yeah. I would like to thank all of the parents of all these students, and especially the ones who came out from Whitefish and Kalispell and Denver and all over the place to come and check out their sons and daughters and grandsons. And oh my gosh, sure. so much love in this room. I would like to thank the National Jazz Museum. You guys just to be supporting jazz education, and not only just jazz education, jazz education in rural America. So important, so incredibly important. <laughs> I'm hoping this program can keep going, but the next year, we, when we do this again, we want to bring the students to New Orleans. And that's our goal next year. We'll see. But um, I, uh, I also want to thank um, those who have lent us gear and have been a part of this evening. Carl Moragi loaned us the baritone saxophone. Uh, Jason Clatter uh, loaned us the bass. Um, and DeWitt gave us cymbals and a tap board and a hi-hat clutch and his talents, and um, we couldn't be more thankful for, for that. So, yeah. Thank you.
Amazing. One more round of applause quickly for the Ellington. <laughs> round of applause for Erica for bringing all these kids here. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So um, thank you very much for coming to the National Jazz Museum in Harlem. We are going to uh, let you continue your evening. Please come back. Come hang out with us again. If you'd like to become a member, you can do that right up at the front. Um, if you would like to make a small donation up at the front, that helps as well. I want to pass the mic to the president of the Duke Ellington Society for a brief message, but everybody say hello to Ray Carmen, everybody. It's amazing how small the world is. My wife told me that, Erica, you moved to White, Whitefish, Montana. Mm -hmm. You have a brewery in, my, in that town, yeah. right? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to say something to you. <laughs> For about 10 years, maybe 15 years, Joe, who works in the brewery, I forgot his last Barbera. name. Barbera. Barbera. Yeah, his wife is Pam, right? Yeah, Pam and my daughter met when they were three years old. Pam's mother, <laughs> Pam's mother and I have known one another before her mother got married. And I find it ironic that all the white fishes here in Harlem, <laughs> in which I volunteer and tell jazz history and talk about things. This is the most unbelievable thing that has happened to me for the 15 years I've been volunteering here. So before you go back, would you kind can I take a picture with you? That is unbelievable. I'm in Whitefish. Yeah. Welcome to Harlem. Yeah. All right, get home safe, everybody. Thank you. Good night.